everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Ellie and with my dog Otto I recently finished a 1600 mile long through hike across Britain and in today's video which is the second part of our Q&A video I want to talk um, about my gear, uh, rate my gear and just review the main things, things that I loved, things that I didn't love and things that I um, maybe won't use anymore in the future. So let's go! During our hike and after it I got a lot of questions about my gear and how I like different items so I am just going um, over a few things. My base weight for this hike was about 8.7 kilograms which is not ultra light obviously but it includes um, all my electronics that I used for uh, filming and editing on the trails so with the iPad, the GoPro, spare batteries, a bigger power bank than the one I would usually take if I wouldn't be filming, obviously that adds a lot of weight. I think all my electronics that I only took for um, filming and editing were almost two kilograms. And then obviously if you're taking your dog with you, you have a bit of um, stuff and gear for your dog too, like a blanket, a jumper, maybe a raincoat, a bowl and all those things. Overall, I'm really happy with my base weight. Um, I mean, I could, if I would invest in, for example, a DCF tent or another sleeping pad, I could get an even lighter pack, but obviously that always costs a lot of money. And for me right now, it worked out really well. Everything that I used on this hike has been dialed in over the years. In this video, I'm not going to go over all my gear because I did that in um, one of my first videos before setting off. There's a complete video with all my gear. So feel free to um, go back and watch that if you're interested in all the um, little details. And I'm also going to link my lighter pack gear list in the um, description of the video. So there's everything with the exact name, brand and um, weight. So you can uh, go there and yeah, check it out. In this video, I only want to go over gear items that um, I was either asked about or things that stood out, like either in a very positive way or in a negative way, things that I didn't like, things that I loved. So yeah, just going to go over those things, things that somehow stood out or surprised me. So let's start with the big four, number one being the backpack. If you've watched my gear video that I made before setting off for the trail, um, you know that I set off with the um, ULA Ohm 2.0 pack. <laughs> if you've watched my vlogs, you realize that I ended up um, switching back to my old backpack, which is the Osprey AR58. Uh, it's also a relatively lightweight pack. I think it only weighs 1.2 kilograms, um, but, <laughs> Now that's the question, uh, why did I end up um, switching back to my old pack? Because I've used this pack last year and the year before, it was okay, but I didn't like the layout of the pockets and some pockets were just like hard to reach or um, some pockets I didn't have any use for them and the pack was just a bit like wide and it always felt like it was weighing me back a little bit. It's just one of the reasons I ended up switching. Also, I didn't like the um, cushion on the hip belt uh, with the Osprey AR. Um, that's one of the reasons why I switched to the ULA Ohm 2.0. And I really like, if you have seen my one of my first videos, the Shakedown hike, I really like the ULA Ohm pack. Um, but I don't know why, but it's maybe I didn't choose the right size because I'm a small person, but I think my torso is like compared to the rest of my body is a bit longer and I think maybe going for the smaller size wasn't the best idea. I don't know why. After I've hiked for a couple of weeks, I just realized that it didn't fit very well. And yeah, this gave me um, really horrible bruising on my hips and it even got swollen to the point where it was like this big. And it took a couple of uh, weeks to go away, even with the other pack. So I don't know what, but there was just some constant pressure on some point on my hip. And I was really afraid that it would get really infected and yeah, that I would need to um, 
get medical attention for that. So um, yeah, I was a bit afraid of that um, because that would have probably been the end of our hike at least for a couple of weeks until that would have healed. So I've decided to switch back to my old pack. But as I said, that's not the perfect fit for me either. I don't know, it's just isn't that comfortable. But that being said, it held up really well. I've now hiked over well over 2000 kilometers with this and there's snow. I think there's a little hole on one side in the mesh, but only a tiny one and it held up really great. So yeah, that's it, it's a great pack, I think, but I don't know, it just wasn't the right fit for me. So I finished with this pack, but <laughs> The um, search for the perfect pack, like the perfect pack for me, um, yeah, continues. I still haven't found the one, so to say, um, at least when it comes to bigger packs, like 50 to 60 liters. So yeah, I haven't found the, the ideal one where I feel like everything is perfect. Like it fits very well. It carries the load comfortably because if you're hiking with the dog, obviously with dog food, if you only resupply every couple of days or even one to two weeks there's a lot of weight like even if the rest of your gear is really lightweight it just adds up so I really need a pack that can carry a heavier load comfortably and I thought that was the ULA pack but yeah something just wasn't right and yeah just didn't fit very well. Currently I'm looking into um, two packs which is the Mo from Atom Packs that looks and from what you can read from reviews um, sounds really great and I'm also looking into the Dursen Kagwa. I think for next year I'm going to try one of these two packs and yeah hope they're a little bit of a better fit. Next up is the tent and I've got several questions about it so yeah I'm just going into a bit more detail for that one. I've hiked with the um, Dursen x mid 1. It's not the DCF version, it's the Sil Poly or Sil Nylon version um, and it has a, it's a double wall tent, it has a separate like inner tent. This is my first freestanding tent so it basically um, goes up with the trekking poles and then you just have to stake it out and it goes up. I really like that it's so easy to set up. If you do it a couple of times and watch the videos on the Durston YouTube channel, it's really easy. Basically, you just have to stake out a rectangular as best as you can with all the corners at a 90 degree angle and then put the poles in. I didn't have any problem setting it up as a non-freestanding tent. Sometimes on rocky ground I've used the little rock, big rock method which is basically a pitch where you don't use the pack but attach the guy lines to a small rock and hold it in place with a bigger, heavier rock on top. I think it's the um, gear item that I've changed my mind a lot during the hike because when I set off it felt nice and I liked it, there's a lot of space um, with it but after the first nights where it was really windy, to be honest I didn't feel very safe in it because the tent I've used before, one of the tents I've used the most before, is the Nordisk Telemark. So it's a tunnel tent and it's just more aerodynamic, so to say. So with the Dursten, in the beginning it felt like the big, it has a big surface area and it felt like it catches a lot of wind and it does. And as a result of that, I felt a bit unsafe and I was in constant worry that the tent would break or it would just rip. So yeah, I was a bit skeptical and that continued for the first weeks. But the more I hiked and the more um, situations I've used it in, the more comfortable I got. And now at the end of the hike, I really love this tent. It's one of my favorite pieces of gear and I'm really, really happy with it. Even after 100 nights in it, there's no wear and tear, there, there are no holes in it, although I did use a piece of Tyvek as a crown sheet for like rocky crown, which I think is a good idea because obviously the materials are lightweight, but there are no holes in it, nothing. It's really roomy, like that's only a one person tent, but there's for, for one person, there's a lot of space in it. Like you can easily, if you're alone in the tent, you can easily spread out your gear on the sides. There's a lot of space to store gear inside which I think it's always important especially if you're hiking in a 
wetter climate. But even with Otto in the tent, I mean, he's a small dog and he's probably the maximum size of a dog that you can fit in if you also want to fit your gear inside the tent. But it worked out really well. I mean, I'm, as I said, I'm not a tall person. So obviously there's always room at my feet where I can put stuff to. It weighs less than one kilogram and I was very, very happy with it. When it comes to condensation, the tent performed really well. I mean, there's always condensation when there's a lot of moisture in the air or you're setting up on high wet grass or near a body of water. But with the two doors, there's a good amount of ventilation and the double wall kept the condensation from tripping down. So I was very pleased with it and it did a lot better than other tents I've owned before. The only thing that could potentially be a downside is the big footprint of the tent. With the big inner tent and the porches on both sides, the footprint is, or seems at least, quite big for a one-person tent. But in reality, I've never had a problem setting it up, even on a slope. Basically, you just need to find a relatively flat spot for the inner tent area, which would be the same space as you would need for any other tent, like one meter wide and two meters long. If the rest of the footprint, like the area where the porches are, is not level, you can still get a good pitch by extending your pole on one side and by adjusting the corner guy lines. With these techniques, I always manage to set up the tent. I know that some people are skeptical when it comes to freestanding tents and you have questions like what if I can't set it up or the packs don't go in and I literally can't get to the tent pitched. And I was too, but in reality I've always managed to find a place to pitch and I've pitched on rocky ground, sand, box, near roots from trees. And of course, sometimes I had to move a few meters to the side and try again, but I was always able to pitch the tent. So maybe that helps a bit. I think what changed my mind and why I started feeling more comfortable in the tent was um, that I started to pitch it better. As I said, it's really easy to pitch. You can't, there's no confusion on that. It's really, it goes up really um, easily. But what really makes difference is the packs you're using. Because in the beginning I was using this um, small lightweight pack that came with my Nordisk tent, my old tent. Actually, when it was really windy, the packs got pulled out a couple of times. But then I started to use the MSR Groundhogs. These are not the mini ones, but the regular ones. They are a bit heavier and as you can see, they are a lot longer and um, yeah, more sturdy. This really made a difference because after that, there's, um, they were never got pulled out again and was really stable. Also, what really helps is to pitch the tent. If the winds are really high, it helps to pitch the tent really low because in the beginning I was pitching it a bit higher, which is great to like, get the air flowing and to prevent condensation in the tent. And that's a perfect thing if there's only light winds or no winds at all. Um, but if there are like stronger winds, the wind can just go under the tent and maybe damage it or pull out the packs. So what I started to do is whenever it was really windy, I just pitched it really low to the ground so that the fabric basically touched the grass and no wind or not a lot of wind could get under the tent. And that really helped. Also, I didn't actually do that because I couldn't find the right like cord for it while I was hiking, but I'm going to at these, there are, I think, six more guy out points that there's no cord in them, just the loops, but you can add cord to them. So four on the bottom of each side and two guy out loops or points um, on that big surface area of the tent. And if you attach a guy line there, um, it obviously can help to stabilize the tent in higher winds. And that's something that I'm going to add to, just taking a little Dynema cord and adding these as a guy line and then I think it's even more stable in the wind. But that being said, I think it was just getting used to the tent, I think, because in the beginning I was afraid that the trekking poles would break, which is really silly because they are they're designed to carry your body weight and even more. So they're really sturdy and don't break easily. So I don't know, I think it was just more in my head and just the getting used to the different and like higher, bigger structure of the tent compared to a tunnel tent. And I had this tent in really heavy 
um, rain and wind up to I think 40, 45 miles per hour and it was totally fine, it didn't trip or anything. So yeah, I'm really happy with that and I'm definitely going to use it moving forward. Then for my sleep system on the hike, I've used the uh, Thermarest Neo Air x Lite, and yeah, I've used it for a couple of years and I'm really, really happy with it. I've had a little issue with it on the trail because it started to um, lose air and I thought it would be a small hole, but I couldn't like even in the bathtub at a hotel, I couldn't find it. But it was really annoying because obviously if you're waking up and lying on the ground, that's really, yeah, it really hurts your back. So I ended up buying a new pad because I knew that I um, couldn't send it in to get repaired or anything. Um, so I bought the same pad again and used it and I've had no issues with that. Once I was home, I sent it in because um, with Thermarest you can send in your pad and I think for around 20 euros, I think, they patch up up to 20 holes. So you can just send it in, they will repair it for you and then you can, you will get it back. And I sent it in to get it repaired because I thought, okay, even if for 20 euro, if they just, I'm not able to find the hole apparently. Um, so I'm just going to do that. Was very, very happy with the customer service at Thermarest because um, once I sent it in, I takes a couple of weeks and then I got a package from them and I thought okay that's the um, sleeping pad that's patched up again but they actually sent me a brand new one the same pad as a new one because apparently they have really checked it and realized that there wasn't a hole in it which is why I couldn't find one but apparently there was an issue with the wing lock and that's where the um, air like leaked out and it was a warranty issue and they replaced it obviously under the warranty. I think they have a 30 year um, warranty. So yeah, really uh, was really happy with that because I didn't expect it, but they really checked it and realized that it was, yeah, that it was a warranty issue, with, which I didn't even realize. So yeah, really happy with them. Other than that, I've had no issues whatsoever. And even with Otto's like the paws and his claws, um, there was no hole in it, so yeah, really happy with it. Now for the last item of my big four, which is one of my favorite items, if not the best um, gear items for me, and that's my quilt. It's a synthetic quilt made by Gram Expert. That's a small Slovenian brand and they um, custom make it and I'm really, really happy with it. I've used it this year and last year. And as you can see, there's nothing. There's no holes, no rips, nothing. Everything's perfect. You can wash it in the washing machine, even with Otto with like scratching lying on it. There's nothing. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, I've chosen the Apex um, 233 material, which is supposed to be comfortable around minus four degrees, I think. And for me, it was accurate. I'm a cold sleeper um, and I've had this in temperatures below freezing, maybe at minus two, minus four degrees. And obviously I have worn all my clothes, like my thermal clothes and my puffy jacket, but it was fine and I really, yeah, I just love it. It feels really comfortable and it's hard to get it dirty. Like you can always easily brush off uh, mud or dirt so you don't feel like you're sleeping in sand or just, yeah, the dirt. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. And that's yeah definitely um, one of my favorites um, in my current gear list. For the next bigger section, which is clothes. I'm just going over a few things. Something that I've really liked were my shoes. Most of the trail this time I've hiked in the Ultra Olympus 5. Um, they are trail running shoes. They have a really good amount of cushion and I really like them. They were, I mean, they're not as durable, obviously, as hiking boots. I think they lasted me for almost 700 miles, which is, I think, really, really good. I've hiked in these before, but not 
on a long trail like this. So yeah, was really pleased with those. Same for my hiking socks. They are merino wool hiking socks from Darn Tough and they are my absolute favorites. Um, and same with the um, Thermarest sleeping pad. I really like their customer service because whenever you get a hole in them, they just replace it for free. And I actually did that and it worked out really well. You basically just have to send them a picture of the sock and the hole and then they ask you to like cut it up and send them a picture of that. You basically get the um, the money that the socks cost back to your account as like some sort of points and you can just buy a new pair the same one or even use the points towards a different pair another pair of socks that I really liked I know there's different opinions on these but they work for me are my waterproof socks they are from seal skins and they have some sort of special layer inside if you're walking through the box all day eventually they will get wet but it's really great um, to prevent cold feet and uh, for me they work really really well and um, I feel like it takes a long time for them to get wet so yeah definitely um, using them um, going forward too. Another thing that really really surprised me is my lightweight fleece hoodie handmade by a small German brand called Outlight side and as you can see it's just a basic hoodie from a really lightweight material it's a special kind of fleece I think it's called polar tech or something like a really um, yeah really special kind of fleece and it's really 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 lightweight I think this whole hoodie only wears about 95 grams or 100 grams and I thought okay the material is so thin and almost see-through that it wouldn't really keep me warm and that it would like suffer from abrasion a lot but as you can see it didn't there are no holes in it nothing I've worn this when I hiked so I've had the um, backpack rubbing on the material itself without any other layer over it so I was really really happy with it it's so durable I wouldn't have thought that honestly and it for the um, low weight it's really warm too so definitely happy with that one thing that I liked but I don't know if I'll be using it um, moving forward is my rain jacket I've used the Outdoor Research Helium 2, I think this is. It's really, really lightweight and I've had this for two years. So maybe that's normal too, but it wasn't as durable as I would have wanted it to be because during the hike, it started to leak through, like not at a specific seam, just the material as if it, yeah, I don't know why, just the material seemed to be not as waterproof anymore and it started to get wet under it really quickly like not after hours and hours and hours but after I don't know 20 minutes half an hour it already started to slowly leak through I don't know if that's just normal for a because obviously it's a very thin material and also with the backpack on it also obviously suffers from abrasion I don't know if that's normal once I got home I tried to re-waterproof it like there's this specific tech wash thing from Nick Wax that you can basically washing it and then re-waterproofing it with a special like liquid thing that you put in, in your washing machine but so far I didn't test it again so I don't know if that solved the issue to be honest I think it maybe did work a bit but not entirely because on, in some parts I can see that the fabric like the inner layer is coming off a little bit at certain points so yeah I don't know about that initially I was very happy with the jacket and maybe it's just something that you have to live with if you're opting for a very lightweight material like this one but um, yeah I don't know depending on how it goes like with the re-waterproofing I think if I'm getting a new jacket I think I might get something that's a bit heavier but maybe a bit more sturdy especially when you're um, wearing it under a backpack so that's a mixed review on the rain jacket and then something I didn't like was my hiking tights I bought these just before setting off for the trail so only a few months ago and they weren't e even cheap they're from um, Otlo which is a I think very 
well-known brand and a bigger brand. But obviously with hiking pants, if you're moving all day, there's just a lot of pressure on these seams. And it just, yeah, I don't know. These, these seams just weren't very good and just started to came undone and start to get open. Um, and I've tried to fix it, but obviously if it just have a small needle and a little bit of thread, that's hard to, to patch up. So yeah, I was very disappointed with those. And that already happened, I think, not even four weeks into the hike. So not very happy with those. Next up are my electronics. I think in this category I wouldn't change that much. It worked out really well, everything that I had with me. But things that stood out were definitely my GPS watch, which is the Garmin Instinct Solar 2, I think. And I was very happy with it. From what I could um, see on the hike, it was pretty accurate when it came to recording the mileage and elevation. It has a pressure meter thing. It gives you the time of sunrise and sunset and a couple of more things. And I was really happy with the battery life too, because um, if it was fully charged, it lasted for almost three days of recording almost the entire day. So recording our hike for, I don't know, seven to eight hours every day and it lasted for almost three days. So very happy with that. I've used other personal locator beacons before, like the Spot 3, but this was my first bigger hike with the um, Garmin InReach Mini and I really liked it. I mean, the, they are not cheap and the subscription is not cheap, but especially in the first weeks in Scotland where sometimes I didn't see anyone for almost four days, it was really nice to have that because in a lot of areas there wasn't cell reception for an entire day or a day and a half and yeah I've used it to just send check-in messages to my family saying that I was okay sending my location and also um, which is really nice to have um, to check the weather they will send you the forecast um, like temperature wind so you don't need phone reception or anything it goes um, through the satellite thing and they just send you the weather data and forecast on it which I think it's really nice especially if you're hiking in more remote or more uh, mountain areas where the weather can change quickly too so yeah really happy with that another one of my absolute favorite gear items on this hike is actually my power bank as you can see it's quite large it has um, 25,000 milliampere um, which is a lot and it charges a lot but um, given the fact that I was charging my GoPro and sometimes my iPad and obviously also my phone, my headlamp, the Garmin InReach, my GPS watch with it, um, yeah I just wanted to go a little bit bigger but uh, I was really really happy with it. It's not from one of the bigger name brands like Anchor but it's from Inu bought it based on the reviews that it had on Amazon, but I was so, so happy with it. It didn't let me down. I think it weighs about 400 grams, which I think it's um, totally okay for 25,000 milliampere. And it charges my phone and my other devices really quickly. So I don't know, I was so impressed with this. It didn't let me down, it worked all the time. So yeah, really, really happy with that. And one thing related to the power bank that was actually a really big, big, big game changer for my hike. I don't know, I didn't realize that before or yeah, just, I don't know. But what made a huge difference is looking on the specifications of the power bank. Because for example, on the back of the power bank or on the back of the package, it always says like the, um, like the number of watt um, that you can charge it with. And if you're choosing the correct or best um, plug thing, you can charge it really quickly. So for an example, um, this power bank on the back side, it says that you can charge it, like the input can be um, up to um, 45 watt. You can charge it with any um, USB plug, but if you're only using, for example, one of those regular phone charging things, it just won't charge as quickly. So to bring out the whole potential, so to say, of these, um, you can make sure to choose a plug that's ideal for your kind of power bus. So for example, on my plug thing, it says that the output it can give is um, 
45 watt. So that's that means that you can really you can use the whole capacity of it. Because if you're, for example, if you're charging with a um, plug that's only able to provide 20 watt, it just it will still charge, but it will take way longer. And if you're making sure to just look at the uh, specs of your power bank and also your um, charging plug thing, um, you can really like be more efficient because what it meant for my hike is that this whole thing, these 25,000 milli um, ampere, um, it only took about 90 minutes to fully charge it. For other power banks or other types of charges that can last for hours and hours. If you're only in a cafe for an hour or two, um, you can't get that much charge into your devices. So that's something that really, I don't know, it was really, it was really a game changer because obviously with the electronics, my GoPro and everything, I just needed a lot of charge and that was a really great way to get it like really quickly and efficiently. Yeah, maybe as a little tip, just um, check the, the specs on your devices to see if you can charge them more efficiently. Because for example, what I learned, I've had one of those charging points where they had like, I don't know, three or four USB-C ports, but the, um, the watt um, number that it gives that's divided through all the outlets so that means for example I don't know 60 watt but it has four plugs and you're plugging in all four of them every one every um, one of those will only get 15 watt which is not a lot and um, isn't enough to like do the quick charge thing so yeah that was a big learning on my hike I don't know you probably already knew about that um, but I didn't and it really made a big big difference on my hike and now for auto skier. There are two things, one that I loved and one that I didn't love. One of my favorite pieces of gear for auto definitely is um, his quilt. It's also custom made by a creme expert, um, same as my quilt. And it's also uh, synthetic with a, I think, 133 filling. So as you can see, it can double as a blanket, but I also got them to do like snaps on the corner and a um, buckle around the waist. So this basically acts like a top quilt. So I could put the blanket over him and secure it with the snaps around the neck and around the waist with the buckle and make sure that um, it would stay on him if during night he would turn or something. As you can see, it um, suffered a little bit from abrasion, but there's also no holes in it. So the material is really durable definitely a game changer because also it packs down basically to nothing and it's really lightweight to compared to other blankets that I've had before so yeah really happy with that. Something that I liked in the beginning but um, during the hike started to absolutely hate is his uh, collapsible water and food bowl because you've seen it in a couple of videos I used one of these collapsible things but they always made from what seems like a very cheap material so they didn't last me that long. I think I've bought like four new ones during the hike off of Amazon but also from pet shops but it was all the same. If you're folding it down and pulling it back out again five ten times a day just the the folding areas just started to rip open so yeah wasn't happy with those regardless of the brand or how much I paid for them it was always the same so what I bought a couple of weeks ago and what I will be using moving forward is one of those it's also really lightweight you can um, attach it with a carabiner as you can see it's not collapsible so it would just um, yeah hang out from the from my pack a bit more but that way I won't have that issue again so yeah I'm going to use one of those. The last category are things that I was surprised by things that where I didn't have big expectations but during the hike just randomly started to yeah surprise me in a really positive way. First up my airpods or just um, wireless headphones and I was really skeptical about taking them with me because it's just another item that you have to charge and yeah I don't know I just wasn't sure but in the end 
um, spontaneously I decided to take them with me. Especially I feel like if you're hiking with a dog, a lot of times you have like the lead in your hand and you have to do your tracking poles and then if the um, cord and if, if you're on your own and you're just listening to music or podcasts or an audiobook, there's a big chance that the cord is just like get, getting tangled up or hanging down or something. Um, yeah, just didn't like it. It's not a big thing. It definitely isn't a must have for um, a hike by any means, but for me, it just I really liked it and I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. So, yeah, it was really a big surprise that, yeah, how much I liked having these with me. The second item are these towel tabs. Basically, they're like compressed, dried baby wipes and I think like especially if you're wild camping a lot and don't have a access to a shower every day obviously <laughs> they come in really handy because as you can see they're really lightweight they weigh yeah basically nothing they're really small they are really easy to bring with you and you only need a bit of water maybe a tablespoon something like that and they will just decompress and become uh, baby wipes so yeah really happy with those not a high-tech thing or anything but yeah I really like those on my hike and use them a lot another item and that's actually the only thing that I bought during the hike because I realized that I needed it is a waterproof uh, phone case I don't know why I didn't have one before because it's so handy but I really uh, felt the need to get um, this on the hike because especially if you're using your phone for navigation it's really yeah and it's really wet and really rains all the time it's really handy to have that because if you're getting your phone out eventually it will get wet and maybe even stop working so yeah that's that was a really a lifesaver on the offers dike path and definitely something that i will take with me moving forward Another thing that maybe looks basic, but I really <laughs> liked it. Um, that's my uh, fanny pack from Atom Packs. It's really lightweight. It has even a seam sealed um, zipper. It holds about 2.5 liters and I really liked it. I use it every day. The zipper didn't get broken. There's no wear and tear, nothing. And I've re I really like that. It's, there's a lot of uh, things that fit in there. My phone, my power bank, sometimes my GoPro, um, treats for auto. And I also use that when I went to a cafe or um, into a town on my rest day, just to have my essentials, um, wallet, phone and everything. And yeah, really liked it. And for my last item, I've talked about that on my preparation video where I talked about my resupply strategy and um, after all those days eating it, I'm still a big fan of the Yule meals because I'm eating vegan and all of their um, meals are vegan, completely vegan. There are a lot of different options, um, chili, Thai, green curry things, a lot of pasta dishes, um, tomato pasta thing and I've tried a lot of them and I really like them. They were definitely a big surprise on the trail because they're a lot cheaper than most backpacking meals but they're also easy to make. You just have to add boiling water to them and you can easily adjust the, um, the portion size that you want to have. 100 grams of um, this has um, about 400 calories which is a really good um, weight to calorie ratio so if you're considering everything the price the weight and the calories that it provides and given the fact that it's vegan I'm really really happy with it and definitely will be using them um, for my next hikes too this was everything I mean it was not all my gear but the things that stood out the good ones the not so great ones and as you saw I'm actually pretty happy with my gear because it's been dialed in over the years so for me it wasn't a big surprise that I was um, quite happy with most of my gear and um, actually I think I won't change that much for my next hike the only bigger things that I'm definitely looking to upgrade are my rain jacket and of course my backpack. So these are the two bigger things. I mean, obviously you're always interested in getting other gear, trying out different stuff. And I would love to try a DCF tent too, but right now with the budget that I have and 
um, given the fact that I'm really happy with what I have now, I, I think I won't be uh, switching a lot of the gear right now. So yeah, really happy how this turned out. And I hope you've liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. That would mean so, so much. And if you have any questions related to the video or other gear that I didn't talk about, feel free to ask in the comments and I will answer your questions as best as I can. So for now, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and see you soon. Bye.